In this video, I will show you how to use Microsoft Whiteboard, which is a free whiteboard application from Microsoft. This is a tutorial for beginners. Previously, I have made two videos, but one was a little bit advanced and the second was too short introduction to Microsoft Whiteboard. So therefore, I decided to make a detailed video for beginners. So in this video, I will be covering most of the tools and features available in Microsoft Whiteboard except the Insert menu because I have made a dedicated video for Insert menu which I will put a link in this video at the location of 5 minutes. You can click on the link and you can watch that video. So if we click on these three dots, I will be explaining all these features up to this point. Then if you look at the bottom, there is a toolbar. I will be explaining everything except this insert menu and all of these topics are covered in my second video. Then if I click on this inking mode, there are editing tools. I will explain all of these tools in this video. So let's get started after a short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and I make videos about educational technology tools available for students and teachers. If you are interested in this topic, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel, normally every Tuesday and Friday. So let's get started. So to install Microsoft Whiteboard, you can simply type this in Google and you will be directed to Microsoft Store where you have to use a Hotmail account and you can download the application and install on your computer. So I am assuming that you have already installed it. So once you start the application, you might not see these pen and other tools. So this is because sometimes it starts in this mode. And then if you are using a mouse and you have not connected any tablet, then you will have to click on this inking mode and then you will see these editing tools and then you can use these tools to write on the whiteboard. At this stage, I am using my mouse only. So currently black pen is selected and I can type with my mouse. It's very hard to write with mouse. Therefore, I recommend that you use a tablet. I use a very low cost tablet, Wacom Intuos tablet, which is just six inches size and it's about $100. I will put a link in the description of this video. And if you buy, I will get a commission, but your price will not change. So it is good to use a tablet, even a low cost Wacom or any other tablet. But at this stage, I am using mouse. And if you want to change the color of the pen, you click on this pen and all these colors and sizes will appear here. So you can make it thick like this or you can change the color to any other color. Then you have some rainbow colors and there is also a galaxy pen which looks something like that. Then you have a highlighter and you can select the colors for this highlighter as well. Then there is eraser. If you want to erase anything, you click on the eraser and then you start erasing whatever you have drawn. Then there is a ruler. If I click on that, a ruler will appear and now I'm using mouse. So if I select a pen, let me change color to black. So when I bring this arrow close to the edge of the ruler, I click and I drag, a line will be drawn which is a straight line but if i move my arrow a little further away from the edge a stage will come where line will not be drawn so you have to keep the arrow close to the edge in order to draw the line now the second important thing is how to change the angle so if you are using mouse you put your arrow inside the ruler click it and then you can move the wheel of your mouse i am moving in the away direction and it is moving clockwise and if I move the wheel towards me it will be rotating in the anti-clockwise direction but if your arrow becomes outside the ruler and then you move your wheel now I am moving the wheel towards me and it is zooming out if I move the wheel away from me it will be zooming in so outside the ruler the function of rotating the mouse wheel is zooming and inside the ruler it rotates the 
ruler. To remove this ruler from your whiteboard, you click on the ruler once again, it will be unselected. So let me type something, anything like this. And this is the lasso tool. If I click on that, it is selected now. And if I click on any of the objects, now I can perform few functions. For example, if I click on this color picker, I can change the color of this object. I can delete the object. I can copy the object. If I click on these three dots, I can cut the object and paste somewhere else, or I can put alternate text. If I click on alternate text and let's say I put a curve or some description of this object. This is for vision impaired people who might use an application and the application will read this for them and they will understand what is on the board. Then you have undo and redo features here. And now let's click on done inking. And now we have few features available in this toolbar. If I click on this text feature, I can add any text here. And once you have written the text, if you click on it again, you can change the color of the text by clicking on this A, let's say green, and you can perform few other operations. For example, you can edit the text, you can delete the text, you can copy the text, or if you click on these three dots, you have cut and alternate text. Then if I click on add note, a sticky note will appear. And these sticky notes are very important for class activities. So in this way, you can add a sticky note. And then we have this insert menu for which I have made a dedicated video. You can watch that video. And now before I explain you these features from this point to this point, I would like to show you one more thing. If you click on this arrow, it will take you to all of your whiteboards, which you have previously created. And Microsoft Whiteboard stores all of your boards in cloud. So they are automatically saved. And as you can see that they are stored according to the dates. I can click here and I can create a new board. This is the board on which we are working at the moment. If I click on this plus sign, a new blank board will be created. And if I go back, this blank whiteboard is here. And this is the one on which we are working. You can click and select. So this is also very important that you know that if you want to share this whiteboard when you are collaborating with your colleagues or team members or even students where you are using these sticky notes, for example, to do some class activities, you can click on this and then by default, this web sharing link is not there. And if you move this switch to right, it will work. It will take some time and it will create a link for you. You can copy this link by clicking on this copy link and you will see this message link copied and you can send this link to your students or your team members and they can click on the link and this whiteboard will also be accessible to those people. So this is one thing and you can turn this off again and the link will be removed from here. So let's close this. And we have missed one feature, inserting images. And this I will explain at the end because I assume that most of you already know this. It's very easy. So let's talk about these menu items. So the first is active pen. Now, if you are using a tablet and as soon as you connect your tablet on the USB port and you start writing with the stylus, this will automatically move to the right because it will detect the tablet and it will turn on the active pen. So now I'm going to connect my tablet and you will see what happens. And now I have connected the tablet and now as soon as I bring my pen on this board, it was very quick. As you can see that the switch automatically turned to the right. And now these pens will appear here. It will automatically start this inking mode because now I'm using tablet pen. And I can now select a pen and I can write with my stylus. So at the moment I am writing on my tablet and this is very easy to write. Your speed will improve, your writing will improve. So if I want to clear this canvas, I click on these three dots and clear canvas. Everything is gone. Now let me show you the next option is ink to shape. I can turn this off. So let us turn this on. And now if I draw any shape, something like this, 
the application will automatically create a perfect shape. So it was a rectangle or a square. So it tried to capture it and it created a square. It could be a triangle as well. My triangle was not perfect, but the application automatically detects and completed the triangle. And if this mode is off and now I try to draw a triangle, although this triangle I drew was better than the first one, but now the application does not change it to a perfect triangle. So this is the feature of ink to shape. Now let's talk about ink to table and ink to table means that if I draw a table like shape, a rectangle, for example, like this, and then I put a line in between this. So now it's a table. It's not a shape. It's a table and there is a plus and minus and I can increase the columns by pressing plus. I can increase the row by pressing plus on the left hand side. Now, if I start writing something, let's say I write x square plus y square plus z square. Now, as you can see that it is automatically adjusting this cell area. So this is how you can draw automatic tables very easily and you can write in tables. Now, the next one is object snapping and object let's let us first uh, turn this off and let's say I click on this lasso tool I select this object and I want to move this now as you can see that there is no guidelines I cannot align this to let's say for example this uh, square I cannot do that on the other hand if I turn this feature on and now I select this object by clicking on that and now I try to move it as you can see that various guidelines and snapping options are appearing. I can align this with other objects something like this. So this is how you can align objects. For example, you have many sticky notes. You can align them in this way. So this was this feature. Next one is export. If I click on export, I can export this whiteboard in the form of an image or in the form of a vector image. Now the next feature is format background. If I click on that, now I can change the color of my page. I can select any color. If I hover over this area, I have few grids available. I can change the grid design of my page. So let us go back to the previous one. So in this way, you can format the background. Next is toolbar location. If I click on that, I have three options. Currently, the tools are at the bottom. If I click on left, the tools will be on the left. And similarly, you can move tool to the right as well. So let's go back to the bottom one. Now, then we have clear canvas, which I have already explained. And then we have accessibility checker. So let's click on that and as you can see that I have four objects and it is showing me all four objects in this area. What is accessibility checker? Again, some people who cannot see clearly, they use certain applications and those applications try to pronounce whatever is written on this whiteboard. For example, the application might say it's a triangle. It's a square, something like that. So you have to tell the application. Otherwise, the application will not be able to do that. How to do that? By providing alternate text. So if I, for example, click on accessibility checker and then I want to provide some text for this square, I click on that. A dialog box will appear and I can write a square shape. And now if I go back, this will be ticked. It means that this shape has some description. Some applications will be able to read this. This object is now accessible for other applications for vision impaired people. But for these three shapes, I have not given any description. So therefore, this is provided by Microsoft Whiteboard for us to understand that whether we have given a description or not. Let's go back now. Now it's complete. We have described all these features. And the last thing is this image feature. So what I do is I turn this off and now the last feature inserting images. If I click on that, 
there are three options. Library image means if I want to select an image from my computer, if I click on this, it will open my file explorer and I will be able to select any image from within my computer. And the camera option is if I want to take a picture from my webcam, for example, I can do that. And if I click on Bing image, Microsoft whiteboard is connected to Bing search engine, which is Microsoft search engine, and it will find images on Bing. So if I click on that and now I want to use Creative Commons images. So I type Creative Commons and then I type anything, for example, National Geography, for example, National Geographic. And it will show me Creative Commons images only. I can click on this and I can see all the results. Creative Commons is a license which allows you to use that image and modify it, but it also has many types. And if you want to learn more about Creative Commons licenses, you can click on this link and you can learn. Now, let's say I select any image. When I click on this image, the thumbnail changes. And now I can see a plus sign and a link. If I click on this link, it will take me to the web page of this image. But if I click on this plus, the image will be inserted inside my whiteboard. And now I can resize this image. I can rotate this image, whatever I want. I can perform some operations as well. So this is how you can insert images into Microsoft Whiteboard. And this concludes our tutorial on Microsoft Whiteboard. I hope you like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.